This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hi, welcome to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport, and this is my very first show on Pet Life Radio. First of all, I want to thank my dear friend Mark Winter for giving me this amazing opportunity on this incredible network to talk about the things that mean the most to me, animals, adoption, and rescue. This is such an exciting moment for me, and what a great show I have today. And for those of you that don't know anything about me, let me give you a brief, well, let's hope it's brief, background on what I've been through and what I've done in my career. I started out as an entertainment reporter. I was on the Today Show for a few decades, and I've been on every red carpet known to man. I've interviewed every celebrity. I had breakfast at Tiffany's with Audrey Hepburn. I've had dinner with Frank Sinatra. I did one of George Clooney's very first interviews on a gurney on the set of ER. I got to hang out with Brad Pitt. Needless to say, it's been an amazing career and so much fun getting to know these celebrities. But it's very interesting what happened to me along the way. I got the most amazing job on NBC's Today Show. And while I was being the red carpet maven, I went to my boss one day because one of my beloved dogs, my German Shepherd Jack, was diagnosed with bone cancer. It was so devastating to me. And he had been going through treatment and I would watch him and his tenacity, his will to live. He never let the loss of a limb stand in the way of living the best life in the world. And I thought, this would be such a great story to show his recovery and how animals can teach us so much. They don't care how they look. They don't care what they're going through. They just want to be loved and out of pain. So I went to my boss and I said, can I chronicle Jack's story? I know he's not a movie star or a TV star, but I think it would really help people understand the wonderful way these animals help us and how amazing they are. He said, sure, go for it. Well, I did Jack's story. I got emails from all over the world. People were reaching out to me. They were crying. They were so touched. They couldn't believe what this animal went through and how amazing he was. That day I went to my boss, Jim Bell, and I said, you know what? Stars don't need my help. Animals do. Would you give me an opportunity to switch my whole career, get off the red carpet and really focus on animal welfare? And much to my surprise, he said, hey, go for it. Be our pet reporter. I said, well, I don't really love that title. How about Animal Advocate? And that is how it all began. And from that day forward, I was able to have those precious minutes on national TV on an amazing show to shine a light on animals in need. And I started the segment Bow to Wow, which ran for over seven and a half years on NBC's Today Show. We had a 100% adoption record. And from there, I was able to do my Rappaport to the Rescue segments on ABC's The View. I created what I think is, I hope, my greatest legacy, Dog Bowl. I came up with this idea because I've been fortunate enough to be part of Puppy Bowl, the amazing show on Animal Planet. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to shine the same amazing light on senior animals? Can you imagine if we could do it the same way? We're in hopefully year four now, which is so exciting that I'm able to come back and do this show, which I love so much. And now to have this opportunity to talk to you, to bring people on that love animals so much and care so much about what happens to them and how we can do whatever we can to save them. So I am so thrilled to be here. I can't believe this is my first show. And what a great first show this is going to be because my very first guest is a woman that I can actually say is a true legend. I know we throw that word around a lot. Yeah, this one's a legend, that one's a legend, but Meredith Vieira truly is. I had the incredible opportunity of being able to work with her for five years on NBC's Today Show when she was the co-host. Of course, she was the original moderator of ABC's The View, the host of the original daytime version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, also the game show 25 Words or Less. What hasn't this woman done? But what I love most about her is her heart. And you are going to hear how wonderful she is when we come back. I am so excited to have Meredith Beer on with me today, coming up. 
Oh, sure. It's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone. That's right. We are animals. Deal with it. Pet Life Radio. Live life unleashed. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport, and I am so excited. My very first guest on my very first show. And let me tell you something about this wonderful lady. First of all, she not only puts the J in journalist, the P in personality, but I have to tell you the letter I think applies most to Meredith Vieira is H, not only for quintessential host, but for her heart. There is not a person I know when you mention the name Meredith Fiera that does not say I love her. Meredith, you are so amazing because you have such a gift of warmth, of compassion. And I really mean this when I say this. I'm not just gushing and sucking up to you because you're my first guest. (laughs) Everybody loves you. That's okay. You can suck up. (laughs) But but no, really, I truly mean this. You are the Mm -hmm. kindest, warmest person. And to be at the level you're at in your career, leading into this segment, the litany, the amazing career you've had, but to do what you've done, to be at the level and to have maintained that compassion, that heart, you care so deeply about so many people. And I had the honor of working with you for five years on the Today Show. I got to see you in makeup. I got to see you on the <laughs> set, behind the scenes. You always were the same. You are the real deal. And so are you. For, Thank oh, you. no, no, no. For all of our listeners, you're a gem. And what we bonded over was, of course, our love of animals. You and of course, that's why you're here today. We're going to talk about your unbelievable little Jasper. We're going to get to that in a moment. But first of all, the times we're living in, being that you are an amazing journalist and you have been all over the world, you've covered stories from heart and soul, pain, love, humor. We've never been through a time like this, right? Not that I know of, no. It's just to have this double whammy of the COVID-19 and then the racial unrest that has grown um, with every day, justifiably so. You know, it's funny. I've had a lot of time to think about this because my husband and I have basically been alone in this house except for our two cats and Jasper. And I want to believe that 2020 will go down not as the worst year of our lives, but potentially the best, because I think it's been a wake-up call. I feel that um, the virus was nature's way of telling us, you have to stop doing to the earth what you've done to it for centuries. You have to respect animals. You have to respect nature. You brought this on yourself, and I'm giving you another chance to make it right. And if you don't, the results will be even more devastating. So if we can grasp the moment, if we can grab it and say, we're being told something here that's so significant, we have the opportunity to respect our world, to honor it, then we will see these kinds of situations dissipate. And the same with the racial unrest. This was a wake-up call, long coming. You know, um, George Floyd was not the first. He won't be the last. Uh, You know, I have many friends who said to me, what, are you really surprised by this? I mean, this is what people of color, particularly black, sorry, my cat is moving my (laughs) computer away. That's okay, that's what the show is all about. have, Have lived with their whole lives. And it's not just the police. I mean, they're, That's situational. It's a much greater problem than that. It's systemic. It infiltrates everything that we do, all of our institutions. But this is a chance to recognize that and say, how are we going to change things? How are we going to make it right? And if we all work together, this is an amazing country. You know, I love it. That's why I really love protests, because we have the right in this country to stand up and say, when things are wrong, they're wrong. And let's fix it. So I'm trying to be optimistic about it. Sure, it's very hard right now. But when I watch young people, especially young people out there saying, you know, this is the world we've inherited and we're going to make it right. That gives me a great deal of hope. Well, especially being the mother of three adults. And, you know, I started watching you and really looking up to you and uh, wishing I could be you on West 57th, you know, when you were the cub reporter on CBS's show. And I remember thinking to myself, There was something in your voice. There was a passion and you had such intensity and you always did stories, obviously with heart, but had a meaning and a message. You've been driven your whole life to try to make and help change and move forward. And it's always one of those things that's amazed me about you is that seeing all of this 
going on and a lot of negativity, it's never changed you. You've always remained so optimistic and positive and happy, you know, and, and I've always been amazed at that element of you, Meredith, that you can remain so upbeat with everything you've seen in your career and your personal life. You know, you've been through so much in your family and it's amazing what you there have is gone so through much in your life. To be, to be happy about. There really is. We all have our, our trials. We all have stuff in our lives that is difficult, but at the end of the day, there's still joy. There's still joy out there. I, you know, I've learned a lot by being a journalist and by journalist, I really mean storyteller. Mm-hmm. I love to to get to know other people, to give them a platform, to hear their voice. And when you get out there and you start talking to people, you see how amazing they are, how resilient people are, how loving people are, and how decent. I know it doesn't feel that way right now with all we're going through, but how decent human beings are. And I hold on to that. You know, and my dad, my dad was, but dad and my mom, my mom was a tough cookie. She was, you know, she referred to herself a tough old bird. She was the one who instilled in me this feminist, you can do anything. I had three older brothers. and It was my mom who said, you're going to be better than them and smarter than them. Um, just to sort of convince me at a time when girls weren't allowed to do much that, what are, what are they talking about? And she was a homemaker. You know, she had never gone out and, well, that's a job, but you know what I mean? She had never held a job and she wanted the world for me. And she wanted me to recognize my value. But my dad was a GP, a doctor who actually became, decided to become a doctor when he was a kid during the swine flu epidemic of 1917. Wow. He was walking down the street with his dad and there were bodies lined up along oh the road. God. And he turned to his father and his father was explaining this flu. And my dad said at that moment, he was born in 1904. So it's like 13, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to save lives. And that that spoke so much about who he was as a human being. He was the most humble, loving, kind general practitioner. Almost all of his patients were immigrants from Portugal, uh, the Azores. And he would see them. He'd get to the office at 8 a.m. and he would close the office when the last person was done. So he'd come straggling in to my mom always had his meal ready, maybe 11 o'clock at night. Never changed one day of his life. He appreciated people. He loved people. He wanted to help people. And he instilled that in all his kids. Isn't well, and it explains why you are the way you are. Being that we're going through the most amazing time in our lives, do you miss the whole morning show, the Today Show, being on the cutting edge, being on in the front, you know, and dealing with this, you know, first thing in the morning? Do you wish you were out there again, dealing with these stories every single day? Are you happy that you're home with your family, just absorbing what's going on? It's a little bit of both, probably more the latter. I'm very glad at this time in my life at 66 years of age and my husband's 72 and he has MS and his immune system is compromised. I'm very glad that I can be here, that I am not in that position of, of having to chase a story. So I'm grateful for that. But sure, you, you are who you are. And if you've been doing journalism your whole life, you miss it. I particularly miss telling the human angle of stories, the stories behind the numbers that we're seeing. So that's important. But there were many ways to get your voice out there. Um, right. That's one. Well, you know what's amazing, though? It's like to see that you were the host on the Today Show for five years, and then you went and did a game show. You know, you have two sides to your personality. You've got the journalistic side and then the goofy, fun, <laughs> just impetuous Meredith side that we all love and know so well, which I think is what people love about you so much. You know, you've got both and you really take advantage and enjoy both sides of your personality and really have pursued that in your career. Well, my nickname growing up, um, my brother, Jeff is 13 months older than me. So he couldn't pronounce my name Meredith. So he'd say Meredith, this, and then my mother shortened (laughs) it to Ditz and then it became Ditzy. And I sort of grew into that name, if you know what I mean, because I I am. I (laughs) love it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Your personality is what everybody loves because, you know, when you're a very serious journalist and they see you on the role and the talk show host, and then also obviously on the Today Show, they expect you to be very serious in real life. And you are so not like that. You are zany and fun and lovable. <laughs> and what, as I mentioned, what drew me to you and what I think our connection was the way you love your animals. I mean, I'm watching the tales of the cats and <laughs> Jasper is nearby. You Can have. I let my other cat in because she's crying? Absolutely. Go let her in. That was Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea and Felipe, oh, our brother and sister. My dog was a Sweet Pea. Oh. Was, oh. Okay, so we have to talk about an experience you went through with your beloved Jasper just <laughs> last week. Right there. Jasper 
is 16 years young. Unbelievable. I've known Jasper for when you used to bring him on the Today Show all the time. <laughs> this dog is hilarious. He's got, he reminds me a lot of you. He's zany. He's funny, <laughs> a little neurotic. And you know what I love about him? The personalities. He's, he's a little a, neurotic. Wait, let's back up for a ah, minute. A little neurotic <laughs> in a good way. But you know what? He oh, reminds me, the two of you have very similar characteristics, right? And I think that's what your bond is all about. You adore Jasper, I don't do. You? He looks a little like Richard, actually. He's got the bushy eyebrows and the whole thing. And 16 years old, bless his heart. June 2nd was his birthday. Yep, 16. But what the listeners, I think, are going to really be shocked at, you went through the most horrifying experience last week. Tell us what Jasper went through and what happened to you. Well, we have an invisible fence in our yard. You know, so Jasper's trained not to go through it, obviously. Um, We had the door open, so he and the cats, they come in and out. And I had gone for a walk with a friend. And I came, and Jasper at 16, he really doesn't wander at all anymore. He just goes out. We have a little courtyard, and he'll lie in the sun and then come back in. So I came back from my walk. I was gone about an hour, and I was sitting in the courtyard. I was on the phone, and I sort of looked around, and I noticed he wasn't sitting there, but he probably was in the house. And then I looked at the doorway and he was standing there rigid, just staring, looking at me. And I walked up to him. I thought, okay, well, what's going on here? And I noticed that his fur was matted and I went to touch it on either side, the back area. And he went to, he snapped at me, which he never, ever does. And so I knew something was up. And then I got a damp cloth to see if it was blood. I I wasn't sure. And I realized very quickly that he had two very deep wounds. Uh, And I called my vet and the vet said, okay, uh, let me see a picture. And I snapped some pictures, which you can do now with all these gadgets that we have. He said, you need to bring him in right away. But I couldn't lift him. I couldn't get him into the car. So I had to call the police. And you didn't see blood. You just saw like- I saw, well, that the matting had to have been the blood, some of the blood, but it was deep wounds. And then when the police came, one of the police officers- said who they were so wonderful they he said to me oh my god the dog's belly is all cut up as well so i'm trying to hold it together oh. um they are able to coax him into into a little travel cage that we had he he got into that and then get him in the car and i took him over to the vet and the, the technicians who came out to get him they were in shock they just said oh my god and they got him inside and then the, the vet called me a few hours later and said well he's been mauled by something i'm not sure what Oh, and he, this goodness. is a very bad injury. And they sent him to the trauma unit. This is Yorktown Animal Hospital. Big shout out to them. I love them. Uh, and he's 16 K. years old. Let's not forget 16. how old this dog is. And then he was at uh, a veterinary hospital because they're more accustomed to dealing with this kind of trauma. And it's a 24-hour situation where vets are always there. And uh, they sent me pictures of the wounds after they had sort of cleaned them up and then explained the surgery. And I remember, I mean, I... I had that conversation that you never want to have where yes. I said, you know, don't, don't do this for me. If Jasper's meant to live, if his quality of his life is going to be good, then let's go for it. But I do not want to, I owe him that much, you know, so um, to do the right thing for him. And the, the vet said, no, 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 no. This is a tough guy. This guy has such will. I've never seen anything quite like this in an old dog. And so they did perform surgery. He has so many staples. Looks so like Frankenstein, you know, he's like <laughs> so many, but uh, he's doing, he's doing really, really well. The concern now is the ska- the, some of the skin may not come back. It'll turn sort of black. You know about this sort of stuff. And right. then they have to do another surgery to get to the baby skin underneath. But I mean- everybody's extremely optimistic. He's eating like crazy. He goes for walks. Our black cat, Felipe and Jasper have been best friends forever. Uh-huh. And and he knows some both do, but particularly our black cat Felipe knows that something's up, and he's by Jasper's side every step of the way when we go out. Oh, hey, this this week. Oh, sorry. look at him. Um, they're sweepy. I mean, well, that, aren't these animals, Meredith? They're unbelievable. And I've always said, just like what you said, when they want to be here, they're here. They're you here. Go. When, yes. they, when they want to check out, they go off on their own. They stop eating. You can tell it's a look in their eye. They stop looking at you. It exactly. Over. Sadly, exactly. we've been there. And this dog, it's not his time. It's he not wants his time. to stay with his family. And what a trooper. I mean, when you consider that a puppy, a young dog, would not survive this. And yet a 16-year-old dog, look at him. Jasper, 
Oh, hey, Jasper. Oh. He has his little uh, thunder shirt he, on. I was going to say, and he doesn't look like he's missed a few meals. <laughs> no, he came back pretty, pretty thin, but um, he's eating a lot. He and looks I make great. Chicken and rice, and I, I just signed up for You're spoiling him. Yeah, a much healthier version of food. I mean, the one he had was great, but there's more variety, and I, I'm spoiling him. Yeah, exactly. And, he you know, deserves you know, it. We, we were talking on the phone. You said the one regret you had is that you didn't get pet insurance which a lot of people don't even think about, right? No, they don't. And I, you know, I should have, because we had a dog that had some issues way back when it was hit by a car and uh, it was terrible. And that cost a great deal of money to, to heal his injuries. But at that point I should have thought that the next time I will, and I didn't. And the bills for Jasper are almost $14,000. Right. And see, this is why sadly, I mean, I'm lucky. I'm lucky I can afford it. But that's, you know, think about that for most people. For most people. That, that's why we have the situation in the shelters across the country. People I've been in my vet's office. I was there a month ago where somebody came in and they said, we really think we have to give up our dog because we can't afford the antibiotics. Yeah. And I said, how so, can I help you? Please let me donate to you. That's what happens. The bills are so astronomical, but even basic things like a bladder infection. Totally. Some- can't afford. So major surgeries. I know when I lost my Ruby on March 2nd, she was only in the emergency room and she had to be under oxygen and everything. She was there for less than 10 hours. And it was between the local vet and then the emergency room, almost $3,000. Yeah, I'm sure. So, I'm and, sure. And, you know, and- you, we would do anything to save our pets, but if you've got a family and you've got to put food on the table, this is the problem, right, Meredith? And what kind of a, de- how hard a decision is that to make? Yeah. You know, be- right. because of financial. Yeah. So it really is. It's such a dilemma for so many people. And I go into shelters all the time and the reasons are given up. It's just horrifying and it tugs at your heartstrings. It keeps me up at night. I wish I could take them all in. I have five now and I look around and I think, what else can I do? You know, getting the message out with this wonderful network with shows like this. But what people need to understand is the joy and the love they get back. When you take in an animal in need, one that was dumped, tossed, abandoned for whatever reason, and you give them a second chance at a new life, they not only thrive, but I know personally speaking, they've changed my life forever. Each one of my dogs has added a dimension to my life that I wouldn't have gotten from a human being. I can honestly say that because I haven't. And you know, from your animals and you're the mother of three human children, they give you something that is so magical and so wonderful, right? Well, it's that unconditional love. And when you take in an animal that has not had a good life too, they know, they know that you've helped them. And they're so, they're grateful, you know, they, they want to be loved and they want to love. I think animals, it's just what they are. They're not like people, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and you sense that. And I mean, I felt that with all our pets. And I also see like with Jasper, the way he has faced um, this latest situation, you know, with, with determination and guts. He's a feisty guy. I have, I have a lot to learn from him about the will to live and determination. And they believe that it was a lone coyote. That's what they think oh. because of the extent of the damage done. And, and the vet said, well, think of the coyote. Jasper probably really beat the whatever out of him because he left. Um, I mean, when you think that he survived it, if it really was a coyote, Jasper's not a really big dog. He's a little guy. This is unbelievable. But that's what they believe. They believe that's what it was. So I I don't know. And my friend actually took uh, pictures of a coyote the next day in the field next to our home. So who knows? I don't want to blame the coyote, that one. I don't know. But they roam around and there have been a lot more sightings recently probably because with restaurants not open. I mean, places that we might scavenge for food out where I live, um, they're, they're going elsewhere and moving closer to, to other homes or whatever it is. But yeah. Well, you must be a nervous wreck now. I mean, even letting him out. You, you probably- Well, he goes out with me on a leash. Right. He's a and, house dog now. Right, know. right. But in the future, you're never going to, I mean, take your eyes off him for one second. You can't. I mean, God, heaven forbid, you know, these animals are around. This exactly. dog- is unbelievable. And you made a very interesting point. I talked about this at the top of the show, the lessons they teach us, because my dog, Jack, was the dog that changed my career. As you know, I was the entertainment reporter for decades. 
and on every red carpet. And when I covered Jack's story, when we had to amputate his leg and people from all over the world reached out to me, his ability to live, his resilience, I w- used to watch him. And all he wanted to do was be out of pain and loved. He didn't care that he was missing a leg. Right, but, right. But brothers and sisters, his siblings ran up to him. They smelled the area, but they were just so happy to see him. They were like, ooh, what's wrong with him? Right. Animals don't care how you look, you know, what you're wearing. If your uh, hair looks bad, they just want to be loved and be happy. And I said, he is such an example of how I want to be because he's out of pain. He was playing with the horses. He was running on three legs. And that was the reason I changed my whole career just because of Jack. And I just try to tell people all the time, if you observe your pets, you can learn the most important life lessons from our animals that if we incorporated those lessons, we would be such better people. I love a saying, someone once got me a needlepoint pillow that said, be the person your dog thinks you are. Oh, that's a great saying. Right? And it's like, if we could live up to who they think we are, we'll be pretty great, right? Absolutely. If we can ever do that. If we could ever do that. Great way to look at life. I love that. Yeah, no. And and that's kind of how I've lived my life. And I look at them every day and I, I hope I'm becoming better from them. But that's why I try to encourage people if they're thinking of adopting or rescuing, I tell them that you have no idea what you're going to get back in the end. You know, yes, initially, you know, you're doing a great thing and you feel good about doing the great thing, but the end result is how you have been changed and how they have changed you for the better. And it's just, I don't have children, but yes, I, you do. I, they're, yes, for children. But I can honestly tell you that I feel a, 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 that I'm being a really good parent, but more important that they've made me so much better as a human being in every aspect of my life. Maybe not with men. That's not never been right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I forget the, men. the dog. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have the dogs. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah. When I was younger, I used to have a, a dog, Meredith, named Hampton. He lived till twenty years old, and bless his heart, he had a thing about the bed. And I used to say, "Who needs birth control? I have Hampton." Nobody was getting near the bedroom. Nobody was getting near me. Hampton was like. Aah. It was like, unbelievable. I said, I think my father sent you from heaven to keep all men away from me. But oh they really are amazing. You know, it's you funny know. when you said about the dog, they don't care about you. Right now, half my hair, the roots, are, I mean, half my head is gray hair. I chipped a tooth. I mean, I'm a mess. The dog, eh, you look great. <laughs> I'm looking at you and I think you look beautiful. But meanwhile, you know, Jasper's had such an interesting career. Not only was he kind of like your sidekick. You brought him on every show, including your talk show, the Meredith Vieira show, yeah. uh, the Today Show. He's been on several times. Everyone knows Jasper. Well, it's very interesting because coming up, our next guest, and he's going to be my regular, we call this the Jill and Bill segment. He's on with me every week, the renowned Broadway trainer, Bill Berloni. Now, I did his very first national story on the Today Show. Meredith, you were with me. You introduced me and I introduced Bill. And because of that story, you were so moved by his training techniques, how he took animals literally from the streets, from the alleys and made them Broadway and TV stars. And you said, I want to get to this guy. I need Jasper to go there for training. And lo and behold, you ended up sending Jasper to Bill. And when we come back, we're going to have Bill on. We're going to recap that moment. Bill is so excited to talk to you. He's even more excited to see Jasper. He was... (laughs) Just so unbelievably shaken when he heard what happened to Jasper, but he actually got to live with your wonderful dog for a period of time. So when we come back, we're going to have Mr. Bill Berloni on and Meredith Vieira and Jasper, and we're going to recap those wonderful memories. Stay tuned. We wear fur, and we're damn proud of it. What? And our four legs. And our tail. And we go to the bathroom outside. Well, we may not be too proud of that. (laughs) Sniff around. Then mark your spot right here. Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio. Dot com.
Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport. And if you've been listening, you've heard my wonderful very first guest, the amazing Meredith Vieira. And now I'm joined with my regular partner in crime. This is the section we call the Jill and Bill section. Jill and Bill. The wonderful Broadway renowned trainer, Bill Berloni and Bill and Meredith have a past. How's that for a tease? Meredith, why don't you talk about how you first met Bill and what happened with Jasper? Well, I met him on the show, on the Today Show. You brought him in and and I just really liked him a lot. And he, the work he did with animals was amazing. And we had sort of a, Jasper's a great dog, but he had some issues. <laughs> the worst, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think the worst in my mind was the barking. He was just an incessant barker and it was driving us nuts and we had tried other ways of um, getting him to stop all sorts of things. And I asked Bill if he thought he could help. And he said, yes, but I don't remember Bill exactly how he ended up going to you to live with you. Cause originally you came here, right. And just, you met him and had suggestions. Well, I remember Meredith, you were so good with him, but the rest of the family wasn't <laughs> always following the rules. That's right. So <laughs> I thought it'd be easier to bring him here, teach him some new manners for a little while, you know, and then bring him back. And so. so how did it go? Did you help him? Yeah, I mean, we did. He came here. He <laughs> got along with all our other dogs. He was so great with us. Um, and then I think when he went back, it, it worked for a while. Meredith kept it up, but then he slowly slipped into his old habits. <laughs> Love that bird, Kevin. It's great. Isn't that great? I was going to say, I think you got to do some training on that bird. Do you ever get him to quiet down a little bit, Bill? <laughs> no. Jasper got really attached to your wife. Remember yes. you said he would like always be with her. It's like of, with you, like he yeah. was attached to you. I don't know if you know this, and we talked about this earlier in the show. Jasper had a horrifying experience last week. He was literally attacked, they, Meredith thinks, by a coyote. That's what Not only think. has he survived, the dog is 16 years old and he's thriving. Can you see him? I, Look I, at him there, Bill. Yes. Is Hi, this, Jasper. <laughs> is this a miracle dog or what? I know. Well, again, he's lived this long because of the, the love of the family. And the will to live. Bill, talk about that. I mean, for an animal to survive something like this, there's so much of it is emotional with these animals. When they want to be here, they want to be here, right? Yes. And the fact that he's a mixed breed, you know, he doesn't have one particular trait. He has all the good traits of all dogs. He doesn't want to leave his family. He's not ready yet, you know, and he's going to protect them to the end. I mean, those are predators and he tried to protect himself and the family. Well, and there's nothing you can do from a training standpoint. I mean, Meredith obviously is hand walking him now, but even if you take your eye off your animal for one minute, you, there's no way to protect or train an animal for that, right? What could you do? I mean, you can't put any domestic dog against any wild wolf type predator. I mean, they're going to lose and it's a natural instinct for them to protect their home. So no, you really can't teach them to ignore danger. They're too good hearted. Well, then what was the answer, you know, we have an invisible fence, as you know, yep. is the answer to assume that won't stop something yes. bad from happening and maybe every dog outside should be on a leash? You know, as coyotes and bears and all sorts of critters are moving into our residential neighborhoods, I would recommend that just to be safer, you know. Yeah. Well, we learned that the hard way. I mean, he won't be outside without a leash from now on, but, you know. That's so yeah. upsetting to me because I have a lot of land here and my dogs, you know, they know a good thing when they've got it. So they don't really stray far away. But I'll tell you something. I have a fence backyard for the ones that tend to run off. But the others, I, I mean, I keep my eye on them. But are you saying that really, Bill, we're going to be in a position one day because of what's going on that we really can never let them run around the property without having to worry to some extent uh, that you should always keep them on a leash? Because that's sad for me. They love to run and be free. Again, I'm going to use a little analogy. You know, you wouldn't put a three-year-old toddler out in the front yard and let them run free. You would keep them in a place where it's safe, where they wouldn't hurt themselves, where other people couldn't come and hurt them, you know. And so, again, as there's more dangers coming around into our neighborhoods, you know, my dogs have a five-foot-high fence that only a bear could get over. And even then, we never leave them out there when we're not here. We don't. We see them. We listen to them. I always err on the side of supervising your animals 24 seven. I mean, I always do. Right. I will, you know, I try never to take your eye off them, but it's amazing. I mean, Meredith, how long literally did you realize this happened in a nanosecond to Jasper, right? Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, though, I was out taking a walk. We had our door open because the cats and the dog go out back and forth into the courtyard. 
I've never, ever had a problem. I did, you know, I thought, well, they're safe. All of our, our yard is fenced except for one area that has an invisible fence because it's a opening where the car comes in and out. But the whole thing is actually invisible fence as well, just, just in case. But it never would have crossed my mind, something like this. Yeah. And my husband was home, but he had gone upstairs. So it had to have been in that moment. And I don't think he, he clearly didn't realize anything. And then when I came back, Bill, the dog was, I couldn't see the dog. And then he was standing in the doorway inside the house, like a statue, rigid. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered that he was covered with wounds. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Um, Bill, what do you think about that? You know, Jasper's a little guy, not to mention his age, 16. Yeah. Can you believe he survived this? Again, he's tenacious and he must have put up a good fight to get away. Whatever did it broke his jaw as well. And he wow. lost two teeth. Wow. Oh my goodness. Well, so, or in his fighting back, he, his jaw was broken. But All I could say is I'd hate to see the other guy because <laughs> he should be dead. You know, yeah. a, a coyote who's larger and healthy, you know, taking on a 16 year old senior dog. He must have really put up a fight to walk yeah. away from it at all. Exactly. Yeah. It's amazing. And, you know, Jasper, as you remember, Bill, had such a personality. And one mm -hmm. thing, Meredith, you said he was always barking. Has he calmed down as he's gotten older? Is he still just as feisty as ever? Well, you know, it's funny. He when he came out of the hospital this time, he wasn't barking at all. And then a couple of days ago, he started to bark a little. And I was so happy to hear the bark. It was like, thank God. Oh. 16 years, I wanted him to stop. And now I'm, I'm so excited by the bark. But yeah, he has, he's just come down with age. And his, his hearing isn't as great as it used to be. So the things that he would be so responsive to immediately by barking, he doesn't really hear. So. Right. Well, isn't that so funny, Bill, the, the, the reasons, you know, that she brought the dog to you. Now it's a blessing. It's a gift mm -hmm. just to hear exactly. that going bark. She's like, thank goodness. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Meredith, first of all, I know you have to get to a vet appointment with Jasper. We, do. we have to check his staples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I want to thank you so much for being my very first guest, for sharing your heartfelt stories about your beautiful animals, your career, your perspective on what's going on in the world right now. I truly mean this when I say I love you. You have a heart of gold. I am so thrilled that I not only got to work with you, but I consider you my friend. I just adore you. And thank you for being my good luck charm on our very first show. I know Bill feels the same way when I told him, we're getting Meredith. Bill, <laughs> you and I were jumping up and down, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, I love you both very much. Thank you for including me. It's it's a great show. Nothing to do with me. It's just, I wish you the best. It's fabulous. And to all your viewers, all your listeners, just please stay safe. Thank um, you so much. Everybody. And all the best to you and your family. And what to Jasper. I know he's going to be here for many more years. I love you, Jasper. Sure. Um, bye, guys. Oh, bye-bye, Meredith. You stay safe and we love you. Thank you again. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. And Bill, stay with me because when we come back, we're going to do a quick wrap-up, talk a little bit with you, and sign off on our very first show. That's stay great. with us. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport. We just finished with the wonderful Meredith Vieira. My partner in crime, Bill Berloni, who will be joining me every week, is still here. Bill, so happy we finally did it. You're here. It's our first show. And for those that don't know what you've done, first of all, you're a Tony winner, but not because of your acting. You're a Broadway legend in your own right because of what you've brought to the Broadway stage in terms of four legs. Mm -hmm. You have taken the most unbelievable situations, animals in need to a whole new level, and you've made them superstars. And that's why when I had this opportunity to do this show, I couldn't think of anyone else I'd rather be with than you because you have done such incredible work 
for animals in need and made them literally household names in their own mm-hmm. right. Right, Bill? Yep. And you've done the same with Rappaport to the Rescue. You know, <sighs> you were doing it on the Today Show. So we both were doing it in separate mediums, but with the same goal in mind. And, you know, I know you said there's other people doing similar things to what you're doing, but there's no one doing what you're doing. Let's be honest. You were the first, you're the original, you're the only one. And you've done it in a way that is so unbelievable because when somebody calls you and say, we need a dog for a Broadway show, or we need something right away for a live show, you're there and you deliver. And let's be honest, you're relying on an animal to come Mm -hmm. through for you, which shows the ability and the talent you have to cast these animals. A lot of times the call will come through and I'll go, no, you can't do that. And they'll be like, but we want to. I'm like, I'm sorry, that would be inhumane to animals to do it that way. And now if they're willing to do it the correct way, we rethink it so that it's pleasurable for the animals, which is what my philosophy has always been. You know, we want them to be happy. We want them to enjoy with their life. So I want them going to the theater. Um, They want to look forward to it. They want to see all their friends. They want to have a good time. And that's what the audience see. You're really about fur first. It's not about the gig. It's not about the job, the paycheck. If it's not good for the animal, you're taking a pass. Exactly. Exactly. And that is why it's so important to have people like you to protect them. Because let's be honest, they've been in situations where they're not always looked out for in the best way. And they need advocates like you because Mm -hmm. people think, wow, that dog's going to get on the Broadway stage. Let's do this at any cost. And that's happened. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, five years ago, a discovery came to me to do a reality show about us. And um, I agreed. And basically, because I, I have nothing to hide here at the house. You've been to my house. You can bring cameras in. You can see the way we live, you know. Whereas, have you ever seen the homes of other animal trainers? Did you ever see where Lassie lived or Benji? My thought would be there was probably something they didn't want the general audience to see. So if you can't be transparent and you're transparent, you know, just like me. So I think that's a sign too, you know, if you're not afraid to show people where you live and what you do. He has taken animals for the most unbelievable situations, dire situations. He has taken strays from shelters, from the streets. And he has turned them into Broadway stars, TV stars. What he has done is truly miraculous. And he was the first to do it. And I believe, Bill, you're the only one doing it. Am I correct? There are a couple other trainers who do work in and around that. But, you know, for the most part, when they need an animal to play a part on Broadway, they call me. You're the guy. You're the go-to guy. And what's also amazing is that the whole Broadway community has embraced you so much. Just like everyone in the journalism world, in the news world, adores and loves Meredith Vieira, not to mention her gazillion fans around the world. Everyone in the Broadway world adores you because they know, just like Meredith, you're the real deal. You care so much. You care so deeply. And I want the listeners to understand that this isn't just a job for you, that you go to work and then you come home. Those animals become your family for the rest of their lives. You take them in, you train them. They hopefully go on the stage, they go on to fame and fortune, but they always remain with you for the rest of their lives. How many animals do you have at home right now? Currently, we have 25 dogs, three cats, Kevin, the macaw. A partridge and a pear tree. Oh, Go yeah. ahead. A whole barn full of horses and pigs and donkeys. So quite a few. And they stay with you forever. There's right. no animal that you say, oh, you know what? This isn't working out. When you find them, they're part of the baloney clan, right? Well, as rescue advocates, what do we say? We need to give them forever homes. So right. whether they're working or not, every animal deserves a forever loving home. But the message you've given, the message you've put out there is not only how wonderful rescues are, these animals that we take from these cages to castles, literally, right? Because Mm -hmm. from a cage, wherever they go, if it's a forever home, it is a castle. But you've shown people that they can possess some unbelievable talents. When people have given up on them just as animals, you have discovered them and made superstars out of them. Tell us about some of the animals you've discovered and some of the shows they've been in. I think our listeners will be fascinated and so amused to hear about these animals' history. 
Oh, goodness. I mean, as you've probably said, I started my career with the original Sandy in the original production of Annie the Musical, which was some 43 years ago, which, you know, Annie itself created a whole industry of, of dogs that we trained for not just the stage, but for films as well. 24 other Broadway shows. But, you know, recently when NBC started doing their live theater productions, they called me because they did Peter Pan live and they wanted a dog to play Nana. There had never been a dog to play that role. And they asked me to do it live in front of 10 million people. Oh, I was talk like, about pressure, right? Just a little. No problem. You know, so we did Nana and Peter Pan live. Toto in the Wiz live. You know, we have a movie coming out with um, Jennifer Lopez called Marry Me. And one of my bulldogs, who was found in a junkyard in Newark, stars as Owen Wilson's dog in the film. So they play roles in a lot of different places. And people are, the good thing is people are getting less and less surprised that they're rescue dogs. 40 years ago, it was a big story. A rescue dog? Now people are embracing them. Adoptions are up. So people aren't as surprised when I say, oh, it's a rescue dog. They go, of course. Yeah, see, that it used to drive me so crazy. I have a friend who is always referring to her dog that was not a rescue dog, that it's like a rescue dog because she has so many issues. Mm -hmm. That drives me crazy. I say to her, what you're saying is the reason our shelters are full. Mm -hmm. You are putting this onus, this persona on these animals that it be just because they have issues, they're just like a shelter dog because right. obviously you think all shelter dogs have issues. Exactly. And I'm here to tell you, my dogs are amazing. And, you know, I have one that, you know, has a little separation anxiety, but big deal. You know, everybody has something. My dogs are perfect and they were all rescue dogs. They're sweet. They're loving. They're housebroken. People still, some have a perception that they're second class damaged goods. And what we have been trying to do, you and I, Bill, mm -hmm. ad nauseum is educate people that that is quite the opposite. And you've proven that in your work. I've tried to show people how wonderful these animals are, but well, how do we get people to get over that misconception? You know, by doing shows like this, Jill, you know, when you interviewed me for the first time on network TV, we became fast friends because we shared the same goal. We wanted to educate people about rescue animals. And over the years, we've done benefits together. And so I'm so excited that we finally have a show together where you and I can join our voices and talk to people and show people that, you know, rescue animals aren't damaged goods. And the one thing about you that I loved from the very second I met you, when I say the real deal, and I said it earlier, you know, you go into the Berloni home, your wife, Dorothy, your beautiful daughter, it, it truly is Noah's Ark. It's unbelievable. And the love and the care and compassion, and you don't have a bunch of people running around doing the work for you. This guy is hands-on. You are training and picking up the poop and running around and you're feeding. And I have never seen anything like it. What an operation, what a lifestyle this is. And this isn't a job for you. This is your whole life and you love it. This, I watched you. I watched you when the cameras weren't rolling. You're smiling, you're happy, you're hugging, you're nuzzling. Your wife is doing the same. You truly live and breathe this life. And that is why you are who you are. And that is why these animals thrive so much under your direction, because they feel the love, they feel the support, and they feel the second chance at a new life. And I said, when I got this opportunity from Pet Life Radio and Mark Winter, Mark will be my witness to this. I said, I only want one person with me every week, and that's Bill Berloni, because I adore you. I adore what you've done for animals, and I love your heart. And I love that your commitment, they come first. They come before anything, even before food on the table sometimes. Right, Bill? <laughs> yep. Yep. Certainly before sleep a lot of the time, you know, <laughs> but same thing with you, Jill. You know, your animals living with you and the way you care for them, your horses and everything. Again, our hearts are the same type. So the Jill and Bill show, I'm That's ready right. for it. We're moving forward. And congratulations, our very first show. And I want to dedicate and close out this show and dedicate it to my beloved Ruby, my Moxie Doxy, who I lost on March 2nd. She was one of my six beloved rescue dogs, and she changed my life forever like they all do. So this show is dedicated to you, my beautiful Ruby. Bill, here's to many, many more. I am so excited and so happy that we have begun this journey together. And 
for all of you listening. Thank you so much for tuning in to Rappaport to the Rescue. We hope you've enjoyed it. There'll be many more wonderful guests and shows and topics to come. Please stay safe and keep a positive attitude. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.